I've got all my teapot bodies thrown now. It's time to start working on the lids and spouts. I like to make all the lids and spouts at the same time, just off the hump, the same way I would make the, the bowls I made before. There's two ways of making lids. Now I'm going to make, the first lid I make is always the last teapot body I make. I've got it measured there. You can make a little bowl lid, the same principle as we made the casserole, but in a much smaller scale. You just center a little ball of clay on top of that and I just throw a little bowl. I like to, when I make a lid, either a casserole or a teapot lid, I like to have a fairly shallow bowl. I really don't like the look of a, a deep upside down U lid, if that makes any sense. I'm gonna make a little lid here and we will, I'll show you how to trim and finish both lids. That's just a bit, that's pretty close. And I'm not shy to make my lids a little bit thicker because this lid is going to go in that teapot galley and out and it's going to go on and off of that pot for years. So delicate doesn't last nearly as long in the kitchen as a sturdier lid. That's just a bit too small. You see the outside of that is, if you make it exactly the same size as your calipers, Theoretically, easy for me to say, your lid should fit. Now these sculpting sticks are nice. I'm just going to go along there and just almost trim that lid. And now I cut it off. I just wrap that around in there, cross them, and pull the bottom one. Some people are a bit nervous to pick that up that way, and you're allowed to be nervous. You can, if you want, just make another little trough for that to sit in and that way you have something to pick up and if you're afraid of sticking your thumbs in something you're going to stick it in this and not the lid there's quite a bit of clay there if you're quick and your lid firms up you can get it off and put it back in your bag or you can just uh, put it through the recycle but okay that's one way of making a lid this is the method that I use I like to throw the knob and the lid all in one piece so when it comes off the wheel it's done I'm going to center that little doorknob on there and I'm going to throw the knob I'm going to throw this right side up instead of upside down the little bowl is upside down so I'm going to get this piece of clay the middle part that's showing up is going to be the knob this is plenty big so I'm going to pull it out way too big and get rid of some I always like that clay there. It gives me somewhere to put my needle. Make that tidy. And again, it's not a really skinny lid. You don't want uh, really delicate lids in your... Oh, that was rude. You don't want little delicate lids because they will chip very easily. That's just a bit too big. I'll we'll get the exact size. That's pretty close. I'm going to make the knob. Now the knob is you throw a little bowl the same way, a little tiny piece of clay with the same centering and throwing principles as a big piece of clay. It's just small. I can open up with my fingertip. And just very gently throw the knob on there. You're going to watch, when you look at a knob this way, it looks like it's a nice knob, but when you look sideways, it's far too thick in the waist. We won't even go there. It's far too thick in the waist, so I'm just going to skinny that out, give it a little more definition. Again, the knob, the top of the knob is not really delicate. It's got some thickness and some clay, so it will last for years. Just give it a bit of definition. If you want to, you can drop your finger there. That looks kind of cool. You can drop a finger there, make a line here and a line there, just to give it some interest. Now that's flopped over. Bend that up till it fits. That's pretty good. When you first start making lids, it's a good idea to make a couple lids because if one doesn't fit, you have a backup. And what I often do is I'll throw a couple extra lids and they'll kick around the studio. And as you start making teapots, all these galleys become about the same size. And then you can use the lid from last week or last month on a teapot if you happen to drop a lid or break a lid or anyway the same sculpting stick going underneath tidying it up 
take your wire, cut it off. And I'm not going to bother and put that piece of clay on the bottom. I'm just going to pick it up this way. And you get used to that. So there's the lid. The spout is, the, is just a little vase. Again, thrown off the hump. Going to center a little bit bigger doorknob this time. Going to open it up. And I'm not going to worry about the bottom because you're going to cut it off and you're going to leave the bottom behind. So let's open that up. Pull it up into a little cylinder. But I'm keeping the top closed because I want it to be closed. Uh, and I'm just going to throw just... Again, I like the spout to have some thickness down here, especially because it has to have enough clay to sculpt. If it gets too thin, you can't sculpt, you can't sculpt with it. Um, and don't worry about the water that's gathering in the bottom of that. You're cutting the bottom off anyway, so it just doesn't matter. And this is a bit smaller teapot. I'll make a smaller spout. On the bigger bodies, I'll make a taller spout. I like to put, give it a little bit of support on the inside. I'm going to pull up. Now the pressure, as I'm pulling, you can see where it's dirty. It went straight to me, and I'm supporting it there. And so my pressures are here and there. And I'm just going to support that a little bit. And that's about as tall as I wanted, I think. I'm just giving it a throw. What I'm looking at now, as I mentioned in the teapot before, I like a strong line, the negative space it makes. If your teapot is wishy-washy thrown, it doesn't have a strong negative space. It has messy fingerprints, but the line is... And what I mean by that is that's what I mean by that. It's just a, a messy line. We'll fix that up. Maybe. We'll fix that up. Ah. So when you're throwing your teapot spouts, don't purposely stick your fingers in there to show a bad negative space. Made a mistake doing that. But anyway, you saw what I'm talking about. This, I don't like that negative space. I'm going to throw one for the teapot that I don't stick my fingers in. But I'll finish off with this one. My pressures are directly across from each other. Maybe I can pull it out of the fire. I should be able to pull it out of the fire. But I'm very fussy with a strong teapot line. Make sure it's level. Now one thing I did, and uh, I didn't mention, is the last thing I'm going to do when I'm throwing a teapot spout is when I have the shape I want, which I don't quite have here because I stuck my finger in it, but I'm going to run this needle, or you can use a wooden spoon handle or something, and get rid of all your throw lines in the middle. What makes a teapot splash quite often, or, or, or dribble, is if you have the strong throw lines, is the tea comes swirling out of that spout and splaying out of this and splaying out all over the place. If it's if it's tidy in there, it doesn't follow the throw lines and splay out. I'm gonna make the top, sponge the top tidy. What also makes a teapot dribble is it doesn't have a path to follow. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a uh, path. I'm just supporting gently and pulling that out. And you notice here, there's a real sharp spot. Leave that there, and that'll catch a drip, and it won't, it'll go back in the teapot, and it won't dribble. So what I'll do is I'm going to cut it here, because that's where my teapot is, but I'm also going to cut it down below where the clay is, because if I cut it off, it's hollow. When I pick it up, it'll squish. Put your wire in there, in that trough. Cross them, pull the bottom. I can feel that it's hollow put in this one, cross them, 
pull the bottom, I can feel that it's solid. And if you have a bunch of water in there, it doesn't matter because you're not going to use it anyway. So there's the teapot spout. Like I said, I did stick my finger in it. I'm not really keen on that shape, but it's uh, do what I say and not what I do. And I say, don't stick your finger in it. Uh, we'll come back when those are leather hard. I'll trim them and we'll build them and we'll talk more about teapots when it's time to talk about teapots.